Hello dear nurses, welcome to Nurses Ladder. In this video, I am going to discuss about multiple choice questions on a renal system. So let's begin. The first question which I am going to talk is, the most important sign of acute renal failure is, options are increased blood pressure, increased urine specific gravity, increased body temperature and decreased urine output. So what would be the answer? The answer would be decreased urine output. The most important sign of acute renal failure is decreased urine output. What about the specific gravity which is mentioned here as increased? Actually in acute renal failure it would be decreased. Okay and blood pressure and body temperature is not at all related to this particular problem that means it would not be associated in this case so that's all about the first question other than this there are some other signs and symptoms like nausea vomiting diarrhea even convulsions lethargy headache all of these are related to acute renal failure the second question is the reason behind increase in blood urea nitrogen would be so here we need to know what is the reason would be blood urea nitrogen that is increased level of blood urea nitrogen a option a is decreased renal blood flow option b is hemolysis of rbc option c would be metabolic that is in a normal or decreased metabolic rate and op option d would be destruction of kidney cells what would be the answer so here the answer would be decreased renal blood flow when the blood flow to the kidneys gets decreased this will lead to increased levels of blood urea nitrogen because the waste products would not be excreted from the body through kidney so this can result in increased level of urea okay increased level of urea in the blood that is uremia so that's about the second, second question, question is if the client's potassium level continues to increase what the nurse should anticipate so increased level of potassium is referred to as hyperkalemia so the client here the word client means client with acute renal failure if a client who has a acute renal failure if the client's potassium level is increased then what the nurse should expect so let us see the options first option is circulatory collapse second is pulmonary edema third one is hemorrhage and fourth is cardiac arrest so what would be the option which is correct the option which is correct is cardiac arrest why because increased level of potassium can result in severe form of dysarrhythmias as well as cardiac arrest so the nurse need to be very much alert and she need to get ready with the drugs that is antiarrhythmics okay other than that she need to get track of the patient's ECG okay all of these has to be noted if the level is going to increase Fourth question is a high carbohydrate diet low protein diet is prescribed for a patient with acute renal failure the reason for this is it acts as diuretic second option it reduces demand on liver third option it maintains urine acidity and fourth option is it prevents ketosis so what would you think the option would be which is correct the correct answer for this question is it prevents ketosis because if you provide more protein rich food for a patient who is having a renal failure then it increases the workload on the kidney which results in increased level of toxic waste products which is otherwise referred to as ketosis okay 
So this we need to prevent. So in order to prevent this, we need to provide the patient with increased levels of carbohydrate diet, which helps to meet the demands of the body related to calorie requirement. And we need to reduce the protein diet. So this is all about diet requirement for renal failure patient. Next question is signs of disequilibrium syndrome. So what could be the signs of disequilibrium syndrome? Option number one, headache, confusion, nausea. Option number two, fever, rails and SOB. Option number three, fever, chills, chest pain. Option number four, headache, sorry, hypotension, tachycardia and shortness of breath. So what would be the answer for this? The answer would be headache, confusion and nausea. So let us see what is a disequilibrium syndrome. A disequilibrium syndrome is a complication of hemodialysis. It is usually, um, it, it occurs near to the end and after hemodialysis. The main symptoms of this includes headache, confusion, nausea, other than this, there would be vomiting as well as seizure episodes. So we need to understand what is a disequilibrium syndrome, when it happens and what are the signs and symptoms of this problem. Sixth question is, if the disequilibrium syndrome happens during dialysis, then what the nurse should do? Options are start oxygen, slow rate of dialysis, reassure the client or use trendline bulk position so what would be the answer the answer would be slow the rate of dialysis so the disequilibrium syndrome happens when there is an excess removal of urea as well as different electrolytes from the body this excess removal of electrolytes as well as some specific waste products results in transient cerebral edema which causes this particular problem that is disequilibrium syndrome. So we need to slow the rate of dialysis in order to maintain the equilibrium of the patient. Seventh question is which of the following values are not improved by dialysis? The question is, which, are the, which of the following values are not improved by dialysis? Options are increased serum creatinine, increased potassium, decreased hemoglobin and increased sodium. So what would be the answer? The answer would be decreased hemoglobin. When we do a dialysis, many of the metabolic waste are excreted from the body as well as some electrolytes also which are increased in level like increased serum creatinine potassium sodium many of the electrolytes as well as waste products are removed from the body but what about hemoglobin some cases dialysis can even cause destruction of certain rbcs so because of this, it does not have much effect on the hemoglobin level. So, this would be the answer for this question. Eighth question would be, when assessing the shunt for signs of infection, the nurse should First, absence of broid. Second, sluggish capillary refill. Third, coolness of involved extremity and fourth one is swelling at the shunt site here what would be the correct answer the correct answer would be fourth one that is swelling at the shunt site when a nurse is going to assess the shunt site for signs of infection she need to note whether the patient has any signs of infection like redness, swelling, tenderness or drainage from the site of shunt. 
okay so this is all about the eighth question the ninth question is common clinical manifestation of uremia include option a dry itchy skin option b cyanosis option c bradycardia and option d hypotension what would be the answer the answer would be dry and itchy skin okay so this is the main sign of uremia so uremia means it is it occurs due to increased amount of blood urea nitrogen in the blood question number 10 a client is with chronic kidney disease complaints of nausea all throughout the day what explanation the nurse must give first option is excess fluid load option b chronic anemia and fatigue option c accumulation of waste products and option d acidosis which occur due to medications so what would be the answer the answer would be accumulation of waste products in chronic kidney disease there is a chance of lot of waste products which gets accumulated due to impaired renal function this can lead to nausea in the patient so this must be the explanation which has to be given by the nurse to the patient